Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny Greenleaf, season four, episode two. Did I lose you? That's all coming up next. Cut to the opening scene and Grace is awakened by knocking on her bedroom door. She goes to the door and it's Charity. Charity is saying how I'm so sorry how I acted the other day. I was upset. I wanted what I wanted. And Grace is saying, you know, that's okay. You were angry. We all were in this um, cluster of sadness and confusion. It's okay. And Charity says, you know what, Grace, I just want to be a part of the team. You have something. Everybody has something to do. And I just wanted to know if you could talk to a few people and make it possible that maybe I could be the lead and minister the music. And Grace is like, you know, I'll do my best. I'll try my best. And we think that Charity has an epiphany that maybe she should be more aware and being involved in taking baby steps because they are in this new world of harmony and hope. And as the viewer, we're thinking, okay, that's great. They hug it out. Charity leaves the room only to find out that she is saying all of this to be deceptive. Carissa, she views houses online while we have Lady May, Sophia, and Zora. They're all headed out for a nice girls day out of shopping and brunch and they're all trying to get Grace to go with them and she's just like I wish I could go but I have a lot of meetings. I can't. I need to catch up with a lot of stuff. I'll get back with you another time. Then have Bishop, he's playing the piano and serenades Charity as she comes down the stairs and he's singing unforgettable to her. And when she reaches the bottom of the stairway, she gets to the piano and starts to sing with him as well. And she says, well, what was up with that? And why are you, you know, singing to me? And he's basically telling her that I acknowledge and I see that maybe I'm not giving you as much attention as you need and especially from the family, you know, let's get stronger, let's get better and they have a moment as father and daughter because there's nothing like the kind words that are coming from your father and the reassurance from your dad and she seems as if she has this conflicting emotion of wow, he's saying, in th saying this and things might get better, but at the same time, I'm being very deceptive because I want what I want. Grace gets to the church and she's talking with Corinne and she's also talking with Jacob and her assistant is telling her, look, you have this meeting and this meeting and you have this follow up with Phil and he needs this information. And she's just like, look, I have other endeavors to get to. There's a lot of things that I need to do and it's just too much. He wants to meet with me about everything. She then tells Jacob, you know what? Why don't you meet with Phil instead to cover for me and you get some kind of follow-up that he needs because I don't understand why he needs me every five minutes. Jacob says, okay, I'll talk to Phil about this summer camp that's coming up. I got you. Then Grace goes into her now new office, which was Bishop's, but now she's in there. And we have Noah. He's sitting there and he's waiting for her and he is hot. He is very upset and you could see the intensity in his face. He's already sitting down. Grace sits down and says, so, hey, did you have a good flight? He's like, are you serious? Did I have a good flight? And she's like, okay, I know. I'm sorry. I guess she didn't have any other way or didn't know how to start that conversation. And he basically pleads and wonders, why didn't you tell me that I had a child? Why didn't you do that? He's like, she's like, look, I had Sophia at the time. She was 12. I was in my situation. You were in your situation with your wife. How come you didn't tell her? Basically saying, uh, being sarcastic, how come you didn't tell her about us? Or how come you didn't tell her about this situation? And he's like, I get that. But you didn't tell me I have a whole son up out of here. Like, you you, you weren't honest with that information. And how could you not tell me? And she goes into uh, reminiscing about, 
I thought I was going to go to the clinic and I thought I wasn't going to go through with it. But then I had him. And then the whole time Noah's just looking at her like, like she has got to be out of her mind. Grace says, you know what, it's a part of the past. I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to find a way to make this right. I just want what's best for everybody. He says, you know what, prove it. Tomorrow, I'm getting him out. We also learn that he found out Grace's contact information because when he was 18, he found that information outside of his foster care to track her down and to find out about his birth mother. As Noah leaves the office, he bumps into Jacob. And Jacob says, hey, Noah, what's up, man? You know, you're back in the church. We're glad to see you here. And he's like, yeah, that's great. And he's asking him, hey, how are things with Isabel? How's your life? How's your wife? And he's just like, well, you know, life, you know, just things. And he said, oh, did you talk to, 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 to Gigi? He's like, yeah, you know, I saw her. And he's like, well, what about you? Like, how's your wife? And he's just like, oh, you know, constant headache, you know, same old, same old. They give these broad descriptions about their lives, even though there's a bunch of chaos and a bunch of rhetoric going on. And they're just giving these just plain old answers like, oh, everything's good and everything's okay. Eh, knowing that it's a mess. So Jacob says, you know what, man, you know, you're here. Why don't you come by and see the family? I know that they, they, they want to see you. But he's just like, no, I'm on my way to the airport. As a matter of fact, you know, I won't have time. And then Jacob says, you know, I'll just tell him you said hi. He was like, no, don't don't even do that. And Jacob has this look of confusion. And he's just like, no, don't even tell him you saw me because then it'll come off as rude. You got Lady May, Sophia, and Zora. They're out shopping. They're trying on clothes. And as Lady May is waiting outside of the dressing room, she looks at her phone and she gets an alert and she zoomed in and we see an overage fee of over $38,000 and she gets so upset, she throws her phone at the mirror and breaks it. And the employee of the store says, hey, what happened? What's going on here? And Lady May is just like, I dropped my phone. We don't know what this thir over $38,000 amount is. All we know as a viewer is that it's got her highly upset. Jacob, he goes to see Phil on Grace's behalf. And Phil's just like, oh, hey, you know, nice to see you. What's going on? And he's just like, oh, you know, I just came to see you. And Grace got really busy. And I just wanted to come in and fill in for her and get whatever information that she needs. And he's like, is she that busy that she can't walk across the hall and, and take care of this matter herself? And he's like, yeah, I know, but I just wanted to just fill in. And she just got pretty busy. And, you know, Jacob kind of tucks his jacket and he's just like, you know, before Gigi got here, you know, I was the AP of this church. And Phil's just like, okay. Jacob says, well, okay, I guess we can get to the point of why I'm here. Blue Lake, you wanted to discuss that, what's going on? And Phil says, it's just out of budget, we can't. And not even that, you know, Harmony and Hope, we have tons of camps, we have them nationwide. And not only that, they're very diverse and it's gonna teach them all of the things that they need and it's better equipped and there's more resources. And Jacob says, that's exactly what we weren't going for. That's what makes Blue Lake so different and unique. And he's just like, well, what's better than diversity? And Jacob says, well, not being diverse. And Phil says, okay, well, I need you to explain that. And he says, this camp is for everybody in the summer to take a break and to tap into who we are and not be diverse. And Phil's like, well, diverse from what? And Jacob was like, America? <laughs> it's a time for us to taste our own cuisines, our own foods, music, our culture, and to just be wrapped around and engulfed in us. And Phil says, well, it's out of budget. We can't do it. Tell Grace. End of that. And Jacob says, well, I'll communicate that with Grace, but it's also something that needs to go into further discussion, but I'll tell her anyway. Lady May returns to the house upset. She's stomping up every single step she can get to, and she's huffing and puffing, and even Bishop tries to talk to her as she's coming up the stairs, and she's like, I don't want to hear it. She's just too upset. She's still upset from the text that she got from Connie and the information that she got from Connie, and she's not trying to hear it, but Bishop doesn't know what's going on. He asked her, hey, 
did the girls upset you while y'all went shopping? Like, what's going on? And she says, no, it's, it's not the girls. Do you know that Connie sent me this information about some fees and, and, and overdrafts and things that I owe? Can you believe that? I can't believe that she's behaving this way. And you can see how people behave. As soon as they get a little power, I cannot believe her. And then Bishop is just looking at her like, okay. And he says, you know what? How about when she's like, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. I just want her to just realize and take her place and realize that this situation is temporary and she doesn't need to behave the way that she's behaving. By the way, what's that in your hand? And Bishop has an envelope in his hand and he's just like, oh, it, it's nothing. It's just a bid from the exterminator. And she says, oh, you know what? Go ahead and tell that exterminator to go to Connie's and kill any little thing that they see, including her. And Bishop is just like, and I, oh, okay. Jacob tells Grace, hey, I talked to Phil. He said it's a no can do on the summer camp. We can't afford it. And Grace is just like, you know what? Tell them they can go ahead and go to Blue Lake and I'll pay the difference. And Jacob is just like, oh, well, somebody's been saving their money. And she's like, yeah, I got it. Just, just, just let them know they can go and they're going to go to that camp. And we can already see as a viewer that, hmm, where is Grace getting all this extra money from? And if she is stacking like that, how come she's kept it a secret from everybody? Because there's been some issues in the family previously that she could have helped with. So where's all this extra cash coming from? Grace sets up an account a phone account for her son and we learned that his name is AJ Delahaye and she is being very secretive about what she's doing. We then cut to a scene where Carissa, she's just so engulfed about this house on the market. She's actually seeing a viewing of the house and she speaks to the realtor and she's just like, how much is this going for? And the realtor says, well, this quality and location, maybe high 300s, maybe low 400s, but it's in that range. And she's just like, wow. You know, Carissa says, this is a wonderful house, but basically, you know, we kind of press the cash and, you know, the realtor says, well, can't you just ask your in-laws for it? And she's just like, I'd rather sell plasma. And she's just giggling and Carissa begins to walk away and she says, you know what? I'll see about that. I'll see what I can do. So we can already tell the wheels are churning with Carissa and she wants this house by any means necessary. Jacob, he meets up with the young gentleman that he's supposed to mentor. He pulls up, just speed in his car. He's got a homie in the front seat. And he's just like, oh, hey, you know, I guess you're supposed to be the guy that's supposed to be talking to me or whatever. And Jacob is looking at him like, ooh, I might have my hands full with this one. He tells them to get in the car and they speed off. And as they speed off, we cut to the next scene where we have... Charity and Phil, they're out to lunch and they're talking and Charity, she seems like she's starting to sway a little bit of not being deceptive, deceptive towards her family and she's like, I can't do this. Like my dad and he's such a good man and basically Phil says in a nutshell, he, he, your father, I mean, he's accused of arson. You got all of this deception going on in your family. Like they ain't all that. And he plays a fiddle to her emotions. He knows that she's extra vulnerable, that she's extra sensitive, that she's desperate for a role and placement and a title in her life. And he knows that he can go in and talk to her as a broken individual and says, I see so much in you don't you see it and she gets pulled in and reeled into it like well I don't know why don't you tell me and he's telling her you're a beautiful individual you're so smart basically telling her you have all of these things that so many people need and how dare your family not see these qualities that's really what it's translating to and she is being just pulled in and lured, lured in until his words because you have to remember Phil and Bob you know they Batman and Robin they know how to pull the strings and get what they want when it comes to harmony and hope and when it comes to just deception and the fate and fall of other people to get what they want. So he knows that charity is that mole inside of a project to get information that they need and that they can't get to.
You got Jacob and D, you know, the one that he's mentoring, and they're at this gym, and they're being silly. They're trying to play basketball with a football, and they've just finished this game, and his friend is like, man, come on, we're supposed to be going into the city. Can you drop him off so we can leave? And he's like, man, hold up. Just let me talk to him for a minute. So he pulls Jacob to the side, and he's just like, I don't know what kind of deal the team got with you to keep an eye on me, and I just don't need nobody stopping me if I'm trying to drop like 10 stacks at the strip club, man. He was like, matter of fact, let me give you a little something, man, so you know you can keep everything on that hush and hush. And he pulls out a wad of money. He was like, that's, that's 10 G's right there, man. Just, just take that and do what you want with it. And Jacob says, I don't want that money, man. You got to understand, at one point in my life, I thought that I could run up the tab and do whatever I wanted to, and I never was thinking about the bill, but the bill comes, the check comes. So in other words, things that you do will catch up to you. You just don't see it yet because you're young and dumb and naive, and you're having so much fun at the fallacies and the fakeness of life and money that you can't see reality. So he has that moment and that eye to eye with them. And D says, Man, I was just testing you. Yeah, no, I wasn't going to give you this money. I just wanted to see if you're really that holier-than-thou man that my mother paints you out to be. So, I'll talk to you later. Phil finally catches up with Grace while she's in her office. And he says, oh, well, hello, Grace. And she says, hello. And he's just like, look, I really would like it if you wouldn't skip out on any of the meetings that we have because I really want to catch up with you. She's just like... I don't understand why we have to have 50,000 meetings. It makes more sense if we just have meetings that are critical and we're updating each other on information that neither one of us knows. So having five you know, meetings a day or 10 meetings a day uh, really doesn't make any sense when we can communicate on the big things. And he says, well, okay, that, that makes sense. Um, but I also wanted you to uh, be updated about the camp. And she says, yeah. Um, I said that it was a goal and whatever the overages are, then I'll pay the rest. And he says, well, you know, that might add up to being, she says, I know $100,000. And he says, oh, so you're going to pay that. Okay. And he has this look like, hmm, so you got some money. I honestly don't think Grace has the money. I honestly think that she's playing a little deceptive game. If she does have money, she's kept it on the hush-hush for a while. And she says, yeah, you know, I, I got this. I just want them to go in, uh, to that camp, and I got this under control. He, she, he starts to walk off and get out of the room. And she says, oh, you know what? One more thing, Phil. I really want you to consider Charity, you know, being the minister of music. And he says, oh, that, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind that he could care less about what role Charity does or that she plays. He just wants to play and kill two birds with one stone in the matter. With one, when he gives the report to Charity that she has this new role, she's going to think he's the knight in shining armor that's kept his promise in giving her a role. Also, with Grace, and Grace has that look of epiphany like, oh, wow, he just... If he if I play nice with him, he'll work with me and get things done when he's not doing actually either one of those. He is playing the devil's advocate on both ends to get ultimately what he wants. Sophia and Zora, they have a moment. They're talking girl talk and they're thinking about things that they're going to do. And Sophia says, you know what? I think I'm going to postpone going to school. I really want to stay here with my family and spend time with you and just take a breather. And Zora says, that's great. But the deal is, if you stay here, I want you to stay with me. And also, you need to go to the 5 o'clock Bible studies with me and grandma. And she's like, 5 a.m.? She says, I'll wake you up, but I'm not going to those Bible studies. And she's like, if you are saying you don't want to go to school and you want to stay here and you want to postpone school for a while, that's the deal. You have to go with us. We've got to stick together. And they agree on that. Bishop meets with Corinne 
It's very dark. It's at night. We don't know why she has on her shades and her hat and her coat with her tux, her low, her hat. So she is low key. <laughs> she, hit that, she hit that Aaliyah. But that's basically what that line is. She had her tux, her hat, and her glasses, and she did not want to be seen. And we find out that Corinne goes into her bag and she hands an envelope to Bishop and she's like, hey, anybody finds out you did not get this information from me and he's like I'm not gonna tell anybody it's okay <laughs> and Corinne says the line that gives us a little get a little giggle this does not feel like church and she's walking out of the church parking lot like oh I hope nobody sees me we have Grace and Sophia they meet in her bedroom to talk and it's evident that she's told Sophia about AJ and Sophia is so distraught that she doesn't want to be around her mother. She calls her a hypocrite. And on top of that, she says, I don't even want you driving me to school. I'll drive myself. And she's just like, that's a long way to drive by yourself. Who's going to drive with you? And she's just like, I'll do it myself. I don't want you driving with me. Don't talk to me. And Sophia is over it. We find out that the folder that Corinne gave to Bishop is banking information. He shows the folder to Lady May and says, look, I knew it. They are paying off, H&H &H is paying off Connie. They are giving her money. This is what we need. This is the information that we were looking for. And surprisingly, Lady May says, what are we going to do with this information? This is not the right way. If we're going to win the church back and we're going to win the people back, being messy and pulling up dirt is what we don't want to do. We don't want to be deceptive. We don't want to hold this contents. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to pray for you because I see this, this something stirring in you that wants to play dirty, that wants to be deceptive and deceiving. And she says, we cannot use this. We cannot go down that road. And Bishop is just really perplexed. And we just see this look of confusion like, that's what we need. This is the proof that we need that they're paying her off. And he's really dumbfounded. She walks down the hall and she just seems like she's in another world and she can't believe what he's just done. Carissa, she shows Jacob the house that she's been looking at and she's just like, don't you like it? This is amazing, this is great. And he's like, well, how much is this house gonna cost? And she says, well, you know, I'm thinking that, um, you know, we find a way to get the money and how we find a way to get that money is maybe sell the land that's across the street from the church. And Jacob says, well, no, I don't want to do that. I mean, we could do great things with the land. And she's just like, like what? Like, what plans do you have in mind? And he says, you know, the young man that I'm mentoring, I thought about, man, that land may be something that we can develop for kids that need mentoring or something. I, I don't know what it is yet, but I got a feeling that that land could be put to use. And she says, well, can I just inquire uh, just to see how much that land is worth? And he's just like, no, you know, don't even do that. Let's just hold off on that. And then she says a remark, but I thought, oh, this is foreshadowing to something Carissa is going to do. And she says, well, you know, my name is on that deed as well. I really didn't have to ask you. And he's just like, well, no, but I'm glad you did. Just hold off on doing anything. Give me a week so I can pray and I can think about it. And just, just hold off on it and let me get back to you. And she's just giving him that typical Carissa look like, once again, I'm waiting on you and all of your festivities and we waiting on what you think. Meanwhile, I'm watching that scene and I'm thinking if she really think or if he really thinks that house is still going to be on the market after a week, okay. Bishop is sitting in the bedroom collecting his thoughts and he looks in the envelope that he told Lady May was a bid from the exterminator. He opens it up and we see that it is two plane tickets to Paris, France. He puts the tickets back in the envelope and tosses it in the dresser like, well, forget that plan. That next morning, Sophia is rushing out of the house. It looks like she still has night clothes on, some, some pajama pants and some, a pajama shirt and maybe like a little jacket. And she is rushing out of that house with luggage and bags and she is leaving for school. And Grace says, 
please, Sophia, stop, wait, let's talk about this. But she is so determined to leave, and she's just like, you shouldn't really drive all that way. Are you really going to drive all that way by yourself? And she says, I'm not driving by myself. Um, I have somebody that's going to drive with me. And she says, well, who? And she says, my dad. I'm going to go to the airport and pick him up. <laughs> Sophia gets into the car. She shuts that door, let, pulls the window down, and Grace says, well, I, I love you. And Sophia says, oh, 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 okay, I heard you. And she drives off. And I thought, whoo, she mad. She mad, mad. As she drives off, we have a lady maid. She's coming down the stairs with her Bible because, you know, she has the 5, 8, 5 a.m. Bible study meetings with Zora. And she goes, well, where is Sophia going this early in the morning? And Grace says she's going to school. And she said, well, I thought. And then, you know, Grace, she cuts her off like I I know, like, not not now. And, you know, Grace goes into the house, and then we see Zora. She's up, and she's ready for Bible study. And she's just like, well, where is she going? And Lady May says she is going to school. And Zora was like, well, wait, what she, wait, wait, what you mean she go? Lady May says, look, she leaving. I don't know what's going on. We then see a very disappointing scene where Charity is dishing out information to Corinne because clearly she wants some information back. And she's just like, well, girl, I just told you all of that information. Why don't you tell me something? And Corinne's just like, well, I don't know. She's like, come on now. I just told you all of that. I know you got some dirt for me. And Corinne says, well, Noah. And Charity says, what about Noah? And as she's about to tell some dirt, we have a lady made that says, oh, excuse me. Can I speak to you outside? And she's talking to Corinne, and she pulls Corinne out, and she says, hey, look, give Connie this envelope. And what she says is very unique if you caught it. She says, oh, no need. What it is is it is the back pay and my debt for Connie. So let her know that I pay my debts in full. What was really interesting about that line was, oh, no need. If she's saying, oh, no need, it's basically saying like, well, I might as well go ahead and tell you because I know you're going to look in the envelope. I thought that was really, really slick. And I bet you a lot of people didn't catch that. But she basically <laughs> wanted to put her on, on dab that I know that you dish out information. But I don't even think Corinne caught that because she's just so into, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, that she's not listening and hearing what Lady May is really telling her. And she gives her some Bible verses and those verses and those Bible verses are basically saying treat other people right, pay off your debts, pay, uh, make sure that you treat people with respect. And I think with Corinne, it was going in one ear and out the other. I don't think she, it really dawned on her what Lady May was trying to tell her. But Evidently, Lady May wants to pay off whatever overage, whatever fees. She's really trying to play the, the good angel on the shoulder and not playing this game of deception. She's really trying to take this high road and getting things taken care of. Grace accepts this unknown call and she has a feeling that it is a collect call, which it is. It is a call from AJ from jail and we finally get to see the name that matches the face and he's basically fidgeting and asking, well, you know, when I get out, I might have to go to this halfway house. And Grace catches on and she says, well, I kind of get what you're trying to say. You're going to need somewhere to stay and you're going to need some money, right? And he's just like, yeah, I'm going to need those things. Oh, and, and how is Sophia? That's her name, right? And she's just like, yeah, that's that's her name. And uh, so he's like, is you, are you going to help me or what? And she says, yes, I'll help you. And he's just like, okay, thank you, bye. It's just this awkwardness of, I don't really know you. I know I'm of you, but I'm asking you this because clearly I don't have anybody to help me. So it's just this really awkward, am I supposed to be happy that I'm talking to you kind of conversation. So that is the end of the episode. Now, some side notes. One thing that a lot of viewers probably missed. So, Carissa was sending an email to the person that clearly knows the information about the land that they own. So, she's already inquiring about how much the land is worth. Clearly, it's, <laughs> they're making it known that 
It's highly likely Carissa will not wait on Jacob to make his final decision about this land because she wants that house. She wants to get out of the green leaf house and she's tired of waiting on his answers. We've seen since season one how Carissa has been very submissive when it comes to family decisions, ways that they moved, things that they did. It was only recently that Car Carissa was starting ma to make more decisions on her own because her husband kept letting her down. So this it can be the pivot turn of those two characters. I'm going to go ahead and make an estimate and say that I said in the last review that Carissa was making it easy for the cleanup woman. Jacob is still in the presence of somebody that's a, a pro ball player. He has money. Clearly, he has uh, an addiction of going to the strip clubs because he's talking about dropping 10 stacks and not to tell his accountant, and not to tell his people. It's all going to come together where Jacob is trying to take this high road and he may crash and burn again being in that environment, especially if his wife makes a decision that will upset him to the most. And what will upset him to the max is if she sells that land, not only with consulting him, but he says that's really the only thing left that they have that is theirs that they own. They don't have their own house. They're at the, the Greenleaf house. They don't have but the things that are their possessions at the Greenleaf house. And what they own and what was given to them that they have the deed for is that land. I really think that that will be the pivot turn in their relationship. That will make him so upset to where he's just like, why do I even try to make things right? She's not even listening to me. How about I go into this life? Or she's making it easier for him to be involved with this negative influence because if she sells that land, okay, and he has this idea of how to mentor and how to do all of that, then what will he do? Then what direction will he turn? Don't think that's a good idea if Carissa moves forward and sells that land. Ooh, doesn't look good. <laughs> so my next estimate is that Sophia meeting with her father at the airport. Remember, we have Noah going to the airport as well. If they do a time coordination where everything is back to back to back, will we have a moment where Noah bumps into Sophia, bumping into her dad, and we have all three of those characters in the same presence? How would the reaction be with Noah leaving, knowing that information, now that he has a son, how would that cripple his marriage? Will the wife find out? Because you know, a woman scorn is something crazy. <laughs> that will lead to it being a very interesting season. It's building up a crescendo of things going on, more information being collected from certain characters. We know the goal of harmony and hope. We know that they play dirty when it comes to taking over churches. We know that they can, uh, that they're paying off so far. Uh, Connie, that's just one person. So clearly if she's getting paid off, then uh, it's very evident that other people on the panel are being paid off as well. Where is all of this money coming from? If Grace has it, does she have this money or she's just have her hands up and just running up a bill? We don't know. Wonderful episode. It's starting to churn and speed up a little bit to build up to this crescendo. It feels like it's moving pretty fast in, in following all of these lives at the same time. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. <laughs> Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E.